Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Torrance. So today we're going to take a look at a brand new product from Ultimate Micro, and this is the Ramworks 4 kit. So the new kit uses modern technology to bring you a 4 megabyte expansion card for your Apple II computer in a package that's actually smaller than the original Ramworks 3 card and also less expensive. So let's fire up the soldering iron and put it together. Here are all the components for the Ramworks 4 kit. So first of all, there's a really nice installation guide and this provides pictures of all the components as well as detailed installation instructions. And as far as the components themselves, we have the actual card. This plugs into the auxiliary slot on your Apple IIe and replaces the 80 column slash RAM card. And this provides both 80 column support and the four megabytes of RAM. We've got the actual RAM chips themselves. So these are each four megabytes of four bit DRAM memory. So that's a total of four megabytes of memory. We've got a programmable logic chip with a socket to go into the board. We have a few dip sockets so that we can plug in the memory chips and the HCT245 and 574 which communicate with the Apple IIe bus and then we've got a whole bunch of filtering capacitors a couple LEDs some resistors we have one fuse and then finally there are a couple of headers in case you have the applied engineering RGB card and you want to attach that to the Ramworks 4 so here's my supplies. I've got a soldering iron here. I've got some brass to clean the soldering iron tip, some solder, and then finally a magic eraser because the instructions recommend cleaning all of the pads on the bottom of the board using the eraser first just to make it easier to solder. Oh, and then finally I have a, a flux pen too, which I'll use to clean up everything as I'm soldering. So first thing to install is the sockets, and I need to be really careful to get the sockets in the correct orientation. So pin one is the square pad, all the other ones are round, and pin one is where the notch is. So we're going to make sure to line it up so that the notch is there. Okay, so I've got all those sockets in. The next thing to do is the socket for the PLCC. Let's see if we look. Here is the notch in the corner. And so that goes into this corner up here. Okay, I'll go ahead and tack the corners down. Okay, so I've installed the fuse here at position F1 and either orientation is fine. Now I'm going to install the 10 microfarad filtering capacitors at positions C1, C2, and C17. And these need to be oriented correctly. So the longer leg on the capacitors is the positive and that needs to be inserted into the white area on the board and the negative, which is the shorter leg, goes into the square hole. So I've got the three resistors soldered in. There's a 56 ohm and two 120 ohms. And now I'm gonna go ahead and wire in the LEDs. Again, the longer leg is positive, the shorter leg is negative. I'm gonna go ahead and use red for the power and green for the data uh, because the Apple IIe has a red LED inside of it for power and so I just wanted that to match and 
Okay, so the last required components are the filtering capacitors. These are 0.1 microfarad, and these are not polarized, so the orientation doesn't matter when you put them into the board. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put these in, and I'm going to bend the legs to hold them in so I can go ahead and solder a whole bunch of them at once. Here's our completed board. I've installed all of the integrated circuits and I paid careful attention to make sure that the notch matches the notch on the board itself. So here the notches are all on the right hand side and then for the PLCC there is a notch in the upper left and it's easier if you just make sure that you can actually read the text. That's the simplest thing if it's not upside down. So we'll go ahead and we'll put it into the Apple IIe and fire it up. All right, the next thing I want to try is the Applied Engineering Ramworks Super Desktop Enhancer Disc. And this is a disc that came with the original Ramworks 3 card and lets you do things like set up the Ramworks 3 card for AppleWorks or test the memory. And we'll go ahead and see. Okay, so let's see. It says your Ramworks. Ah, oh, this is great. So your Ramworks has four megabytes of memory and can expand the AppleWorks desktop to 3,000 kilobytes. So let's go ahead and we'll do the Ramworks memory test and see what this tells us. So let's see, type of board. I guess we will just pick a Ramworks 3 since that should be the most compatible with the four. And that's kind of funny because it's showing a picture of what the Ramworks 3 card would look like. You can see the light inside the green LED is blinking, so it's definitely accessing data on the card. And I have no idea how long this test actually takes. Okay, so you can see it says that the card passed. It's already on pass number 10. So that all looks great. Uh, it's now testing the 80 column display. We already know that that works fine. Testing double high res. So double high res works properly. And looks like we're good to go. So that completes my review of the Ramworks 4 card from Ultimate Micro. Uh, final thoughts, I'd give it two thumbs up. Full disclosure, I received a kit for review. If I had to pick some nits with it, the LEDs were a little too bright. I think I would have used slightly larger resistances. In fact, I might actually just uh, unsolder them and put in some larger resistors uh, just so they're not quite so bright. I would have put a notch on the silk screen for which way to insert the sockets for the IC chips. It was pretty easy to figure out just from the, the pin location, uh, but it would have been nice just to have the little notch on the silk screen itself. And finally, it might have been nice to just label it uh, with the, the which end is the keyboard. It's obvious by the slope and the fact that you wouldn't be able to close the lid, uh, but most cards just also say keyboard end, just in case somebody tries to plug them backwards and then turns the computer on without the lid on. So overall though, it's a great kit. It was easy to put together. Definitely a beginner could do it with a little bit of soldering practice. There weren't any problems at all and it just worked out of the box. I've already put it into my main Apple IIe and I've used it for Copy2 Plus so it was able to read all of a disk into memory at once and just copy it. I also used it as a RAM disk and so I was able to fire it up, create a RAM disk that was four meg in size and then copy an entire ProDOS disk to that with no problems and then it was just blindingly fast compared to using the disk drive. So I would say go ahead and get yourself one of these. They're, I believe they're $99 on the Ultimate Micro website. They're available now. And so yeah, two thumbs up for the RAM Works 4 card. So thanks for watching.